All right, Maui demo, I'm building a counter. So let's create a counter component. We'll add a new item, we'll create a content view, and we'll call this counter. And ooh, wait a second, this is not what I wanted to do. This is not XAML, this is C Sharp. So I guess I have to build my UI with C Sharp now instead of XAML. That's all right, let's do it. You know what, XAML is kind of quirky anyways. Let's try building our UI in C Sharp. All right, so we're building a counter, so we're gonna have this label be our count. So we'll start at zero. And then we also wanna increment this count. So we're gonna have a button with some text for increment. This actually isn't too bad to write. It kind of fits the declarative style of XAML because I feel like the way we've typed this out kind of represents the UI that we're gonna see. So let's use this counter. So it's a content view, just like the XAML version would be. So on our page, we're just going to import that component and render it and boom there we go we got our ui we got our count and our increment button all right our ui is kind of ugly so let's clean it up let's center everything so horizontal center and also vertical center let's make our counter text bigger so 48 pixels let's make sure this text is centered so it's not floating all the way to the right as we saw let's put some top margin on our button so we have to initialize a new thickness instead of being able to use that XAML syntax. And we're gonna do 20 to the top, sounds good. And let's also make this font bold as well. There we go, looks better. So now if we wanna continue following MVVM principles, we'd wanna set a binding on this counter text. So instead of displaying zero, we would bind to some sort of property that contains the count. So let's see, this text is a string, which means we can't set some sort of binding on here because again, it has to be a string. It can't be like a binding object. And looking through these properties, I don't see anything that allows us to easily set a property when we initialize it in this way. So we could call a method called, let's see, there's like set binding, which is what we would want to use to set a binding on the text. But as we can see, this returns a void, which means if we want to call this, we'd have to move our label up here as like a variable that we could call methods on and then pass that label variable down here. So I actually don't really wanna do that because then we would be taking our label outside the flow of our UI and then we wouldn't have this declarative syntax where we can look at this code and kind of get an understanding of the structure of our UI just by looking at these flow of elements here. So if we move this to a variable, we wouldn't get that benefit anymore. So that means we really can't set a binding here. So we're gonna have to kind of ditch MVVM principles, honestly. So this is kind of a disadvantage of doing a C-sharp UI rather than a XAML one, but let's keep going. Let's see if we can learn something here or at least build something valuable. So rather than doing a binding, we're gonna store our raw count value somewhere. So we're gonna store this in some sort of state variable. So we're gonna have state that contains all of the relevant data for our component. And I actually wanna make this a record, I think, and we'll see why. Not only are records super easy to define, as we'll see here, we're just gonna have account and boom, there we go, there's our type. But I think there's other benefits that we'll see down the road. And then let's have a property for our state using our counter state. This needs to be private since this type is basically internal to our class. And now let's initialize that state with a count of zero. And now instead of hard coding zero here, let's take our state count and get that as a string. All right, not bad so far, but now we need to update our UI whenever this state changes. So how are we gonna do that? What if we just re-rendered the entire UI whenever our state changed? Maybe we could do that, let's try it. So let's extract all of this to a method and we'll call this render. Okay, pretty cool. So now whenever our state changes, we should call render again. So let's do that. Let's update this property to be a full property, which means we're gonna need a backing field now. So let's expand that. Whenever we call git, we wanna return our backing field. But then whenever we call set, we wanna update the state. So update that backing field to the value that we get passed in. But we also wanna call render again. So we're just gonna re-render the entire UI again whenever our state changes. So this is kind of interesting. There's probably major performance implications that we would need to work around in order for this to be 
a good pattern. But hey, let's keep rolling. Let's see how far we can take this. So next up, of course, is we need to add reactivity. So whenever we click this button, we want to update our count state. So let's see, we know buttons have a clicked event. Do they have some sort of one click property that we can bind to? They do not. So again, we have the same issue. We don't want to take this button outside the flow of the UI that we're trying to render. But this is a little bit more challenging because we definitely need to tap into that clicked event. So what we can do instead is we can create our own button, our own button type to align with this pattern that we're working with. So let's add a new class down here. We'll call this like the reactive button. And we want to inherit from our regular button. And ideally all we want is some sort of one click property that we can set to some sort of callback. So let's create this on click property. I don't know what the type's gonna be. Let's just throw an int for now. So we'll call it on click. And I really only wanna set this property whenever we're using this initializer syntax. So I only wanna set the init setter here. And the callback that we pass to this init setter, I wanna subscribe that to the clicked event on our button. And now we need to update our type. So that means this on click property is going to have to be an event handler so that we can subscribe to this clicked event. So let's make it an event handler and boom, there we go. So now we can define our own callback that we'll pass to one click. We'll call this handle increment clicked. Let's generate this handler. And now we just have to update our state because whenever we update this state, it's going to call render again. And since we want to hit the setter, we can't do something like set the state count directly because setting the count directly here or just doing a plus plus isn't going to trigger this setter so we need to actually set a new value on our state so we need to initialize a new counter state and take the current state count and add one to it so that'll cause our setter to get called and then we'll call render again and re-render our entire ui so not sure how i'm feeling about this but hey let's test it out all right here we go let's increment Boom, seems to be working. We got some pretty good reactivity here. So cool, let's keep going. Let's see how conditional rendering would go because that's something that I tend to struggle with in XAML. Not necessarily struggle, but the syntax is kind of quirky. So let's see how it goes with this pattern. So let's let's add another value to our state called max count. And we'll set this value to five. So whenever we create this new state, let's make sure we forward the max count as well. And what we're gonna do is whenever our count matches the max count, we're just gonna display something down here. And since we're in C-sharp here, which is more of a programming language than XAML is, we can just conditional render with C-sharp. So we wanna check if our state count equals the state max count, and we can just throw in a ternary here. So if the value is equal, we'll throw in a new label. We'll have the text be, you have reached the maximum count, We'll throw a top margin of five. And then if the count doesn't equal the max count, so the last part of our ternary, we'll just return null and render nothing. So here we go, let's hit our max count, there we go. So conditional rendering, super easy. But one of the many things that's quirky with this is setting this new state. So as you can see, we have to forward all of the old state whenever we wanna change just one value and this is where records are super cool so records have syntax that make it super easy to clone the previous value and modify certain fields so to do that we can take our state and use the with keyword and then we only have to set our count to the new count value that we want so the count plus one and this with keyword what it's doing is it's cloning the old state record and then merging in the new values that we want. So super powerful, and this goes really well with this pattern conveniently. And there we go, works as expected. So this is kind of cool what we built here, but there are definitely some quirks with this. So for one, is this C-sharp syntax really that great? Not really. We would probably need a more declarative approach, maybe some sort of C-sharp templating language that we could call like C-sharp X maybe. And then obviously we're re-rendering the entire UI whenever our state changes. So maybe we would need something that renders more efficiently, some sort of virtual DOM that has like an in-memory representation of our UI, which we could update as many times as we want since it's in-memory. And then it takes that in-memory representation of the UI and merges it efficiently into the real UI. So definitely some gaps here, 
But I like what we built. We have a UI that's basically a function of our application state. Pretty cool, but in the end, maybe this is just a terrible idea and we should just stick to XAML.